Today's guest, Lisa Tenney, was born with the ability to know, see, hear, and feel psychic energy. We are in for a very fun adventure. But for Lisa assists her clients with tuning in to their true essence, leading to a deeper awareness of self identity connecting to their soul now, real briefly as an animist and a perpetual student of the esoteric arts she combines energy medicine shamanism archetypal astrology Jungian psychology psychic awareness and nlp and more Lions and tigers, oh my, welcome, welcome, welcome to our show, Lisa. Thank you, Allie. I'm so happy to be here with you. It's so exciting to be back with you, Lisa, and I were friends back when I lived in Idaho, so it's been a long time since we've seen each other. Yeah. Where are we? Where to start? How old were you? when you realize your natural abilities were different or, or were they different from the rest of your family? Yes, very different from the rest of my family. Um, my sister, who we, I call my twin, even though she's a triplet with me, um, had, and still I think has those, I believe everyone has natural abilities actually, but the veil was, non-existent for me I call it the veil but to the other worlds to energy to our ancestors who are around us and our spirit guides and star family and all these different nature beings were always around in to me but I believe that that's because of the experiences I had as a child with near-death experiences um, and a traumatic birth so I was born three months early as a triplet wow. and died several times. Um, my heart stopped, you know, and then they, they had me on a machine for a good few months. Um, but my having gone through that, I believe, is part of why things had stayed open. Plus, I had some experiences in my younger years after surviving infancy um, pneumonia I ended up I had a lot of lung stuff which you probably understand from your perspective of healing of grief and other things uh which I believe also kept things open so I played in the spirit realms really some of it was survival based I believe helped me to survive to stick to stay open in those realms and understand that those beings and those energies are a part of our daily existence whether other people see them or not but I went through a lot in my life with being different and not knowing <laughs> that I was different <laughs> that I could see and feel and sense those things to me just seemed normal if there is such a thing <laughs> um but it also caused a lot of issues in my life because I would oftentimes respond to the energy rather than what was happening consciously with someone. So it took a lot of learning, a lot of unlearning, a lot of human, what is it to be human now? Because I believe being human anciently was very different than being human now which is why animism is such a big part of what I practice and who I am and seeing and recognizing the relationship that we have with all things, the spirit energy or the, inner, the, the life that is in all things. That's a long answer to your question, but yeah. It's like, um, I always listen carefully when other people are speaking. And I'm realizing that a number of people who have the kind of gifts you have, because I don't have quite the same, they had near-death experiences where they died and came back. 
So I think there's something there. And I remember when I was going in for the brain surgery, I knew it was a really dangerous surgery because of where the tumor was located. And I just said to the owners, please, I don't want to go see the light because I want to stay here. Yeah. So that was something I had an awareness of. Ooh, feel that. I remember many years ago when I was first getting introduced to, well, I had seen things all my life that I didn't share because you didn't share that stuff in the 50s and 60s. It was, I'm sure people thought I was weird anyway, so I wasn't going to share what I was seeing and feeling. But I remember um, my kids were probably 10 or teenagers and I was at a book club where we read channeled books and that's how I learned about other worlds and stuff and somebody was there with her I think she was four-year-old daughter and when we were leaving she looked at one of my friends and said where's your orange raincoat and we adults all looked at each other and her mom said she didn't have an orange raincoat and then somebody said I bet she was seeing an aura oh I love that. So, oh, that's a great story. With all the little kids are seeing all these things and it's natural. I, I had another friend um, remembering who was in Idaho and who was East Coast so that he wouldn't have known her. Um, she used to go to people's homes where the grandparents would come and visit and be with the grandchildren. And of course, the parents were not seeing them. So they asked her to come and ask the grandparents to leave because the parents were uncomfortable with that, which is, I think it's kind of sad. That is sad because they'd be a comfort to that child. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah it's I, amazing how many things everybody can do, just all the, the abilities that everyone has innately. But I do feel like we can learn them and open, open that back up in our remembrance because we have it in our DNA. We have it in our cellular memory that goes way, way back where it was just a way of life. It wasn't anything considered unusual or uh, even gifted actually because it was just how we were wired as beings to experience everything around us. And the, the spirits who passed on were there to communicate with us and help us remember certain things or do certain things and give us information from the other side that would be important for us. Yeah, I, I really feel part of what my passion and sole reason for being here is to help people remember that in themselves. It's so much fun to do sessions with people and then have them start to realize that their intuition is working a certain way and how to open that up even more and, and not so much to rely on someone else's intuition for them. It's such a strengthening connection in themselves, you know, to realize that. That's really, really powerful because that's such a gift to be able to give that to somebody. I know my mom comes to visit me and the way I know she's come to visit me is she rearranges my pictures so instead of being this way one will be that way or one time I heard a crash in the middle of the night and I went in and one of the pictures in a glass frame had fallen now there was no breeze there was no reason for that to fall it had been hanging for years so I'm sure for some reason she needed to get my attention. Another time she came and I have a grandfather clock that I made. So it's hanging on the wall. And the time was totally rearranged. It's not like one hand oh. was a little. Both hands were drastically in strange places. <laughs> That's so fun. They try to get do things like that. So it's so obvious we can't miss it, you know. I did, I, your story reminds me of something that happened. My parents call me up now some, sometimes to ask questions. Um, my triplet sister, Anna, is around helping the family quite a lot. And there was a moment where they lived in Utah and they were trying to decide what to do 
in their lives, like move or stay there or sell their business. And she said at night, this one night, an entire picture fell off the wall and it was so secured. You'd have to literally pick it up. It's heavy, pick it up and pull it off the wall to drop it. And the picture was of me and my triplet sister and my twin sister, my other siblings too, but it was a specific picture of the, ch of the children. So she wondered immediately if it was Anna, my, my triplet sister. And so she called me up and all this, these messages were coming in from Anna where she was trying to get their attention saying, there's another place for you and it is time to move. And here's, here's the steps to take, you know, from the other side, from her perspective. So it's really amazing how they do that. They come in and, and the time is another one. I love that you mentioned that because they'll mess with time because it's like time is just our construct. And so they'll play with clocks and play with digital things. It's so much fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's fun if you don't feel scared because you don't understand it, which I imagine a lot of people do. That's true it's I did have a lot of fear early on in my life with that as well I've learned that it's rare for something to be purposefully trying to scare you usually it's innocent like I've had spirits pop up behind things before because <laughs> they were excited <laughs> that someone could see them and it scared the crap out of me <laughs> Because it's like this burst of energy. <laughs> and then you explain to them and then they apologize. I had one at my office in Boise, actually. The, the house there was owned by a, a doctor and he, it had become a different one. It was a Victorian home in downtown, in the North End. And this man was still in the home, wandering around, taking care of it. He felt like this was his place. And this night I left at 11 PM, everyone was gone. Sometimes I'd stay after and do notes and just kind of my own processes. So I leave, you go down these stairs, winding stairs, and then there's a basement that goes down, but it, the door to that basement faces the door that you leave. So when you're locking and unlocking, you're facing that door. And so you can see this little glowing light in the door well, I'm locking up and this shadow, just, just the shadow outline of a man goes right in front of the door. So there's no glow anymore. And it's really obvious. <laughs> and I dropped my keys. <laughs> it was so abrupt. And I, I left and I was trying to communicate in my head, but I was still kind of in an adrenaline state. The following day I go back and we're out of toilet paper. So that means I've got to go down in the basement to get the toilet paper and I was so nervous that he was going to jump out at me so I'm talking out loud <laughs> it's like I don't care if anybody hears me and I said I'm just getting toilet paper please don't scare me <laughs> and I hear in my head I'm sorry I didn't mean to scare you I was excited to talk to you and here's who I am he starts telling me who he is and that he really loves this place and he's happy that there are people who now can speak with him and acknowledge him because he just really loves the area and hopes that he can keep it in a happy feeling in the home and he still saw it as a home even though it was an office building but those kinds of experiences have taught me over time that the majority of time it's us it's our fear it's not the not as often. There are some things that are not so friendly, but most of the time they're trying to help <laughs> and they want to connect. One of my good friends lives way out in the mountains in Virginia, and she has a ghost that lives in the house. And I was there um, one weekend with one of my friends who I guess is a little bit um, sensitive to psychic things. But I don't remember if she saw her, but she said, oh, and her name is Mary, which that was also my friend's name. So she must have spoken with her. And whenever I'd be there by myself, because I was upstairs and my friend's bedroom was downstairs. So I'd be up there alone and I'd always 
talk to Mary and say, please don't show me because I think I'd be scared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's different when you feel them. I think the most natural ability is the sensing from a feeling level, emotional and, and semi-tactile for people rather than the seeing. And I think that's part of it too, is the fear that can come up when you see something um, not of this realm. <laughs> but for me, it's very comforting now. Okay. Uh one of my favorite clients was a young man. And when he was 30, he had a stroke and it was his brain stem. So his brain dead. And it was clearly a hard thing for his mom to go through because she had to make all the decisions. And he came to me that night. And this was the only time this ever happened to me. So I was going to sleep and I felt this incredible energy in the room. And I said, is that you, Michael? And I felt a powerful yes coming. And it was just a love. And oh. I don't remember exactly what I said to him, but I could feel his energy being okay with leaving. Wow. And that That's never beautiful. happened again. And it was like, when I told his mom that, I think it helped her to be able to let him go. Yeah. What a beautiful thing to get to do with her and him. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty amazing. And the last, oh, I, I don't know, the last few months, I've had incredible connectingness to everybody, uh, my whole family, where I'll see something. And then two days later, I'll get a call. Oh, my granddaughter did such and such that I had seen before. And uh, my dad died when I was really, really little. He was an artist. He was like he designed and built things and he had all these brilliant talents but I was so young when he left I didn't get a chance to learn from him mm -hmm. and I have all these skills and I was thinking this year he's here with me because he's showing me how to do all these things that how do I know how to do them otherwise so oh. it, it, you know it makes sense to me everything that you're saying oh yeah I also think isn't it interesting that he had something with his brain stem and you've had some things no, so no, similar? No, he, he didn't have anything with his brain stem. Um, Michael did. That was my friend. My, yeah, I'm switching back. Sorry to oh, that other side. Okay. <laughs> I went back to that one. Your dad, your dad. Yeah. That, I mean, it makes sense too in a, in a memory level that you would experience some of his talents and gifts and that he can come through to you that way like he's given that to you through an energetics and through your cellular and then he can come in and add to that vibrationally I can imagine I could see you doing some things and have him come in and just bring some of his energy in through you with the creativity for sure but when when we go back to your story about Michael <laughs> I just think that's fascinating that you both have had some things with the brain and that he's the one experience that you had where you really felt that love. I wonder if there's a connection. There's some, I'm fascinated by that. The brain, the nervous system and how it's tied into the energy field. The proprioceptive nervous system is like our tuning fork, which creates a vibrational field from the body i believe that the spirit informs the body and there's a, a synergistic link where there's a biofeedback loop right but the proprioceptive nervous system if we work with the proprioceptive nervous system what that is is how we orient um, it's like when you put your hand in your in in a bag and you're looking for something and you in your mind's eye can visualize or feel the thing you're looking for, yeah. that's what the proprioceptive nervous system is. It's like the iPhone icon of our body, but it's also our aura. So it's interesting because once I learned this, I realized why some of what I see in people's energy field is there. Like there'll be a projected image of an event that happened with them it's still floating in their nervous system 
but also in their energy field. And oftentimes people who come in and meet that person will respond to that event that's floating in the nervous system energy field rather than the actual person they're having interaction with that because that's the first thing we come in contact with is the energy field whether we're consciously aware or not so once we shift those things we have different responses in the world because that icon or that event or that thing is is gone it no longer uh orients us in the world does that make sense i hope i'm explaining that well absolutely yeah yeah the first so, oh, go ahead well I, I was the reason i thought of that was because of the stuff that we were talking about with your brain and with michael and and i can see how your abilities would be so unusual as well because of some of this wiring that's unique and different it's not the same because it's been shifted through various the tumors and different things you've experienced but I wonder if some is purposeful for that unusual wiring, kind of like ADD or different ways of thinking and being that are, I believe, purposeful because we need something new and different in the world, not the same old, right? This, the programming that's been put in, in our field around fears and shames and you know, staying small and all the things that we've been taught in society especially around these topics yeah and, and with the ad add and now they just call everything adhd all right the psychologist said look this part of the brain's smaller and that part's bigger and that's what causes it and what it was was the skull bones weren't in alignment right so that that's what i'm experiencing now with my job being out i know that some bones are jammed and I know what I'm experiencing and I know why. So it's, there's a, a reason for all of that to be happening. And with Michael, I, he was just really special to me. Oh. He played with a whole lot of problems and I have a lot of love. I love most people. That would be pretty nasty for me to not love you. So I, frequently get teary if I'm working with somebody but with Michael it's like I'd have to stop because I was just about crying because there was so much love chilling through me into him wow wow I can really relate with that yeah, yeah. I had one. <laughs> someone say that they thought that I was one of those therapists that needed to go to therapy because I cry so much when I'm doing my work. <laughs> but it's because of that. It's it really it's and I think I feel it's so healthy for us to be connected to that part of ourselves. It's not that we're going into our stuff. It's not that kind of crying. It's a gratitude and love expansion crying. It's like this joyful recognition of who that person really is on a soul level that you're feeling and that divinity pours through and it's like you can't help but tear up it's so beautiful like i totally get you <laughs> yeah. just, some of the things you were saying i'm constantly studying and what i study mostly is um well, you're not your brain and you're not your body and you're this one energy. And so I study a lot, a lot, a lot of Chopra. And well, he's probably got 90 something books out there and he's always teaching something. And I listen to his stuff over and over and over. I never read a book just once and done. I'll read it, you know, 90, 100 times until it makes sense to me. And one of the things that I've been studying for a while now is, he says every cell in our body is a holograph of everything in the whole universe. Yes. I love this subject. Keep going. Oh, I was hoping you would <laughs> jump in there. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love this topic. It's endless. It's so true. Like the icons we were talking about earlier when you move things. Um, the holographic and holonomic 
um, theory, it's not so much a theory, I don't believe, but it's being proven to not be theory. It's, it's really the way that it works. When you go into the body, you can go into any part of a situation if you get to it deep enough and change the entire hologram because the one event or the one experience or the one belief or the one thought or the one emotion is tied to the larger whole. So if you can then rewrite and reconnect it to a hologram that's more beneficial for the person and in alignment with what they choose and what they want now on a conscious level, what aligns better for them, it completely shifts the body the system, the nervous system, and the energy field to match that. And it puts that hologram out into the world. So then all response and feedback in the reality becomes aligned with that hologram. I love, love, love this. Oh, we could talk forever on this subject. So you study Chopra talks about that? I don't know. He In Magical Mind, Magical Body, in that particular book, it's like I play books when I'm going to sleep and I figure they go in while I'm sleeping. And you have to be careful which books you choose because you don't want to sleep. You don't want to miss this stuff. But right. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, everything that you just said makes such complete sense to me because what I teach people is you can have only amazing relationships and how you do it is you make a list of everybody and everything they did that you interpreted as being hurtful because uh, you no know, nobody does anything to you it's all done for you but most mm -hmm. people think oh uh, i'm going to blame them for my unhappiness but after you make that list then you go back and you thank them well, what are you thanking them for for coming into your life for doing that particular behavior because it caused you to change your behavior they came to gift you not to hurt you and it was especially vivid to me um recently i was with family with my kids and grandchildren and with my ex-husband and his wife and when he started to go into the kind of behaviors that made me just <laughs> like this one, he started doing it and i just said to myself Oh, I don't have that. Like that, that's who he is. That's how he behaves. And I kind of found it endearing. And when I was saying goodbye to him, I said, you know, don't ever change. And you're a good guy. Oh, wow. And I felt that way. Genuine. Yeah. Genuine. Since we were our worst. That's a fantastic example of how quickly you can change things too. Like you're looking through the same eyes, but you've shifted your lens to really experience him in a different way. And instead seeing those qualities as endearing and think too how that helped him to see himself and to feel that from you. I don't know, he looked at me funny like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> His his inner self probably was excited and, and feeling really loved and cared for and seen. <laughs> oh, wow. But, you know, um, I think now would be a good time okay. to take a sponsor break. And so I'm going to do that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is... For those of you who know what's been going on with me for the last 11 years since the brain surgery, much of my face was paralyzed. It took me five years to be able to walk steps. It took me three years to know, well, I guess I still don't know 11, it's like 11 years later. I'm not always positive the sound's going to come out when I go to talk. And uh, much of my face was paralyzed in my tongue. And I lived that way for 10 years because the neurosurgeon said I wasn't going to get better. Well, fortunately, I have really cool friends. And one of my friends who's a naturopath introduced me to stem cell patches. 
And a couple of weeks after using them, suddenly all my friends, I was talking on the phone, they'd say, wow, your speech is so clear. I understand you now. And a few weeks later, this side of my face got feeling back again. I could kiss my grandchildren for the first time in over 10 years because not enough of my mouth was working to do a kiss. If you're ready to be free from pain and limitations, there's a link in the show notes. Contact me and let's get your life back on track. We are back now with our very, very fascinating guest, Lisa. Would you talk to me? I never heard the word animism before, and I certainly have lived my life that way. Would you share with our epic adventure seekers what that is? Yes, animism is a way of living in reciprocal relationship with everything around you. So it's acknowledging the life, the spirit, or the essence that is real and alive, similar to us in everything. It's the things we don't see in animals, in metals, in bodies of water, land, trees, rocks. And this way of life is a way of honoring the planets or whatever it is in our world, seen and unseen, so that we can understand a deeper relationship to all that is but also it creates a respect that's different like if everyone lived this way with the planet for instance we wouldn't just see it as a resource or a thing to give us something it's a relative it's a brother sister it's a kin it's our kin and so if we treat it that way, not only do we give more conscious respect, but we receive more back as well. When you're giving, you're receiving just as much, whether you're doing energy work with someone or whether you're at a tree and you're feeling the energy of the tree and you're telling the tree how much you appreciate it. There's that sense of awe that everyone has felt in nature where you're out, let's say you're at the Grand Canyon and you're looking at everything and you're just in awe of the beauty of it. That kind of feeling exists with everything if we choose it. And the response and the feedback that we get is amazing. We can create a conscious aware relationship where we're speaking with our plants people are doing this more and more right and some people joke about it but it's amazing how the energy of that and the food is so different to your body and they've studied the frequencies and the energy of it when people do that versus when they don't and so i feel the more we live in this animistic way which is ancient ancient far back in all of our ancestry no matter what your genetics or culture is it's the one of the oldest ways of living shamanism as a way of living and animism as a way of living is has been dated as far back as a hundred thousand years from from anthropologists so it's not a only one culture style of being right um but this kind of relationship creates more experience that enriches, enriches our world with love and kindness when we, we treat things as if they are an extension of us. It's a whole different experience than if it's just a thing, object. Yeah, I was, I have a lot of experience with things and machines and stuff like that. And I have a foreign infrared massage bed. And I've had it for 25 years. And one day it just stopped working and I had to fit because when you live alone, the only thing that touches you is like the massage 
um, infrared lamp going up and down my spine and the warmth. And I call it singing to me when it goes off. And I talk to all of my, my car. And if you ask and you listen, they'll tell you their name. So I know the name of my massage bed. I know the name of my car. And when he stopped working, I actually started to cry because I was devastated. And I ran and I grabbed some of my, I have sacred geometry sheets. It's artwork. And sacred geometry exists in nature. And there are <laughs> artists who do paintings because it has the power. It transforms anything that you put on it. So yes. I put uh, some of those sheets on the massage bed. And then I did like these, they're called Tibetan eights over it. God, every time I do that, I feel the energy point. Uh -huh. I don't know if it's reaching you. Yes. Uh, I, feel <laughs> so I did that uh, for two days, not nonstop, but I uh, left the artwork on there for two days and did the eights a couple of times. And the next time I went to turn it on, I turned it on and it worked perfectly so this is something that's been through I don't know at least five moves being handled and being used through those 25 years and it came back to life because I talked to it and I needed it and I could tell you stories about my cars and all kinds of equipment so when something a machine that I have stops working I know it's given it's all and it just can't do anymore <laughs> Right. That's a fantastic example. I love it. Yeah. And there's, it was created from something that had life force in it too. When you think about even our homes, like if we were to build our homes this way with communication with the wood, communication with the stone, communication with all the, the metals and thanking it for its assistance in creating a space for us, imagine the difference of feeling in the space that would occur as you're building and creating, you're co-creating with these elements in such a loving way. Yeah. The feeling in that space would be entirely different than just putting on a door, you know? <laughs> and, yeah, definitely. And I, I don't know how many years ago I started just blessing my food and thanking it for giving its life for me to enjoy it because well you are what you eat and you are what you eat eats and it all makes a difference and I believe blessings aren't just words not when they're coming from your heart agreed mm -hmm. I was wondering you have so many modalities and I know some people who have lots of the modalities where they're certified I certify people in the courses I create it doesn't really mean it mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah agreed <laughs> so, anyway was how do you use all the modalities in your work I know some people say okay I'm going to do this one with you now or that one and I know you work the way I do could you share with us how you work yes so I've realized I don't work in a linear fashion. It's just not how, really it isn't how we were created, it's how we've been programmed to work in linear fashion. So I work in a spherical fashion, which means that whatever energy comes in that is helpful, I'll use, utilize it. It's very specialized to the person. And I have all kinds of things listed out on my website, but that's more for the linear brain so that people can kind of have that idea, hmm. you know, something to read, something for the mind to connect with uh, definition. But ultimately, it's a whole conglomerate of things that I've learned that I was already doing naturally before. It's given a language to what I'm doing. So what I do is work with the nervous system with the energy field, work with the cells and the memories in the cells from a holographic standpoint. I'm so glad you brought that up holographically, but also in the ancestry, going into the memory of the ancestry that doesn't align with what the person wants with 
which isn't in conscious alignment with what the person wants. So what I do is, is if a person comes in and they say, I would like to resolve a relationship that I had with someone that feels, brings up a lot of fear or brings up a lot of anger still. So we would go into, first of all, their belief and their perception of that interaction, and then find where it stems out into their memory field, which can go into other lifetimes, into their ancestry, in the future, in the past, it goes all in different directions. And we find those resonance, those frequencies, those resonant thoughts, beliefs, feelings, and experiences that created their perspective of that event with that relationship. And then we work on rewiring it from their conscious perspective. We bring in color, we bring in sound, we bring in ideas that they want to have. So if they say, I want to have a relationship that is uh, respectful and loving and honoring and um, where I don't have to be afraid to be myself, all of that kind of thing. So then we say, okay, what colors represent that for you? What sounds represent that for you? What can you imagine as a landscape or a film even if you come up with your own movie of it? And what we do is we have them step into it and live it and experience it to the point where their body and their energy field starts to create that memory in place of the other ones. And there's a lot of different points that we'll go to and we'll do specific clearing as well, go into trauma and different things. There's a lot of rewire that can occur, but ultimately we're collapsing in all of those parts to come in and create a new hologram in their energy field and in their body. And that can show up in all kinds of amazing ways. People have had numb ankles that have suddenly gone to where they have feeling like it's like that tingly, heavy neuropathy is what it's called. And all their life they'd had it, you know, uh, migraine headaches, um, emotional loops that have occurred that created issues. Um, all kinds of different things we can go into. Uh, and sometimes it's fun too, to go into the lifetimes and see, because every single time we clear something out, something wise comes in to replace it. Like that event occurred because blah, 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 blah. Because on a soul level, I wanted to know what it, what it would be like to experience this end of things so that I could then be something different. So I'm experiencing this partner that's mirroring back all these things so that I can then find where that exists and shift it in myself and be something new, be something that I choose from a conscious level now. So it's super fun. And the, the gifts too that come in, sometimes they're psychic gifts that come in afterwards. They've had lifetimes of different oppressive kinds of things that have occurred as a result of being so open and vulnerable in the world. And so they've shut down certain parts, not just the body, but also psychically. And sometimes that'll start opening. I've had people start seeing spirits in their, <laughs> I'm not saying this is going to happen, <laughs> but someone who started to experience uh, people coming into the spa, their spa, and just knowing what was going on with an ancestor or with a, a partner and she had to now relearn how to use this gift and ability from her perspective now and the body and experience she's in now so then it shifted our sessions to being more of a mentoring where she's learning how to utilize these abilities and then she realized she's had them her whole life she just had certain blocks because she was choosing to see it as something not so positive, or I just feel this ick around this person, you know, but now she was having clear awareness of what she was actually picking up on. So it helps her to orient better in her life as well. Like, oh, okay, this is purposeful and I can be useful in it instead of feeling impacted by it all. 
you know, it's not a victim state state anymore. Yeah. Um, I was wondering as our time is cutting down, is there one message you want to be sure and leave with everyone? You are so much more. You are a frequency being, an attunement being. You give off information and receive information all the time, whether you're aware or not. And the more aware you become, the more exciting your life will be. The more joyful your life will be, the more magical it will be. And it's fun. <laughs> to understand yourself and the world from a bigger, broader, and more magical perspective. Mm -hmm. That would be my message. Thank you. And what would be the best way for people to reach you? At intuitiveilluminations.org or sense. illuminate to number two, lowercase b, at gmail.com. And all those links will be in the show notes. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being you. And definitely need to have you back because I know there's some fun stuff we didn't quite get to today. So I look forward to doing that. Me too. And thank I, you. and thank you everyone for being here with us today. Remember to join our Patreon community. Let's get to know each other and join in the fun. Join our Facebook group, make some new friends, ask some questions, take advantage of special offers that appear only there. Listen to or watch any episode on our show site. You can leave a comment, write a review so others can find us more easily appreciate. You're helping us get the word out. If you share the show with just two friends, You've changed more than two lives. And remember to enjoy, that's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment, because nothing happens outside of you, and everything happens within. I look forward to seeing you next time.